everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Linux Guy. Today I'm going to be talking about Jellyfin. For those of you who don't know what Jellyfin is, think of your own personal Netflix or Amazon Prime video, except that can also play music and a few other things. Jellyfin is basically that, it's your own private and fully open source Netflix. So let's dive right in and I'm going to teach you how to install and get started using Jellyfin on an Ubuntu server install. So I've got Ubuntu 20.04 LTS installed. I think Ubuntu server is just the easiest way to go about installing most of these Linux server instances. If you're really interested in the video that I'm doing right now, I've got some videos that will explain not only how to install Ubuntu server, but also how to install the graphical interface you're looking for, which is XFCE desktop. Let's go ahead and get started and we're going to install Jellyfin. You see I've got bookmarked the Jellyfin documentation. I will try to remember to link to this in the bottom so you can get it really easily. You see it's available for all sorts of platforms. You could even install it on Windows and Mac OS. One thing to note about Jellyfin, you cannot install it on 32-bit operating system. So if your hardware is i386 architecture, you're not going to be able to use Jellyfin on something quite that old. Most new systems can support 32-bit or 64-bit from the last 10 years or so, and it's 2020 now, so something from 2010 should work fine. Maybe even a little bit older than that should be okay. You see there's documentation for how to install Jellyfin. Now this part right here is for if you're already running Jellyfin and how to migrate it to their new repository. But what we're interested in is this part down here, and this is going to tell us how to install Jellyfin. Word of caution, whenever you go to a guide like this to the internet, you're always going to make sure you actually know what these commands are doing. I'm not going to outright tell you, don't copy and paste them. I'm going to say it's okay to copy and paste them as long as you know what they're doing. And I'm going to explain to you what all these are doing. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the sudo apt install transport https. And all this is doing is it's installing this program, which is an https transport program that Jellyfin uses. All right, now that we've installed that, we need to add a repository. Now the repository we want to add is called Universe, and this has something important, which is the FFmpeg dependencies that we need for our system. Some of you may have already installed this, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. As you can see, my system actually already has this installed, but if you don't have universe installed, you're going to need it because you're going to need this FFmpeg dependency that comes with that universe repository. The next thing we need to do is we need to download some stuff from the internet, and we can do that from the terminal using the wget command. And what we're going to do is we're going to download some keys for signing our Jellyfin instance so that we know that we actually have a legit one. So let's go ahead and do that. And you also see we have a pipe in our command here. This is saying, go ahead and add the key we just downloaded to our system. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the repository configuration to this file right here, which is an Etsy apt sources and Jellyfin. We're going to make a new one called Jellyfin. So this is going to echo some stuff, which means it's going to print some things out to the terminal. And then we're going to pipe, and we're going to go ahead and make the change. So that's what this command is doing. It's not the only way to make this change, but it's a seamless way, so you don't actually have to go into a text editor and do anything. So that's what this does. Let's go ahead and do that. And we are ready to move on. So the next thing we need to do is we need to run security updates. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Now, Jellyfin is a service for your computer, much like a web server like Apache, but Jellyfin actually has its own name, and that is conveniently Jellyfin. So the next thing we need to do after running updates is actually install the server. So let's go ahead and install Jellyfin. And it's just sudo apt install Jellyfin. Since we've went and added and gone the key, we should have no problem here and we should be able to say yes and install it. You see the whole server is only 224 megabytes. It's quite small. Now once Jellyfin is installed, we need to make sure that the service is running. So that's what this command does. It goes and checks our system services to see if Jellyfin is running. So let's have a look. You'll see it is active and it is running. That's what we want to see right there. And to get out of this menu, you can just type colon Q, which will take you right back to your terminal. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and restart the service. This will clear any caches. Now this last one, it's one for you to note because this is how you actually manage your system. 
if I needed to stop my service for some reason, for troubleshooting or for whatever reason, I can go ahead and run this command and then it would actually stop it. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you just so you can see. Now we'll go back up and we'll check the status and you'll see that it's not running, it failed. And I'll go ahead and start it. Check the status, you see it is running. All right, so that's it. Our Jellyfin server should be running. So to access it, we're gonna be on localhost for our machine. You can replace this with your IP address of your server on your local network. And an important thing is Jellyfin operates on a specific port and that default port is 8096. So let's go to colon 8096, which will go to that port. And welcome to Jellyfin. There we go, we've got a Jellyfin server up and running. We can go ahead and do the quick start guide here. Let's do that. So this tells you basically how everything works on your system. If you don't have a proper installation, it tells you how to do this. It tells you where to browse it and how you can set up a proxy, how you can set up SSL, all things you may want to continue to do with your server. So let's go ahead and click next and we can set a whole bunch of stuff here. So let's set a username, the Linux guy. And once you've set up your username and password, we'll go ahead and click next. The next thing you want to do is you want to set up a media library. The easiest one to do is to set up your videos folder because it's already going to have all the correct permissions. So let's go ahead into our videos and you see there's nothing here. Well, I went ahead and downloaded one of my own videos. This is my first video on this channel and I'm going to put that in here. So everything in our videos folder is going to show up and be playable on Jellyfin. So I'll leave that there. And we're going to add a media library. So we can choose the content type to say what it is. Let's just say this is a TV show. It's not, but let's just say it is. Now you can change what it shows up as too. Now let's go ahead and add a folder. If you click the plus sign, this looks like you need to specify something, but what you actually want to do is you want to click and navigate to it. So I'm going to click root on my computer, go to home, the Linux guy, and I'm going to select videos. So now I've chosen videos as my folder. If you're going to make additional folders, I suggest making them right here in your home folder. So for me, it would be the Linux guy. For you, it would be whatever your username is. The reason I recommend doing that is because of permissions. If you go ahead and make them there, the permissions will be correct. But if you don't, you're going to have to go play with permissions, and that can be a challenge. So let's go ahead and click OK, and we've got that. We can set a language if we like. We can also set a country. These aren't super important. You can also set where it pulls automatically pictures and covers so that you can browse through and it looks like Netflix. You can also add these manually if you choose or if you need to because it can't find them you can do that as well. I'll go ahead and leave the defaults here but you can use whichever ones you like. And we'll click OK. You see now we have a media library. You can add as many of these as you want. We'll go ahead and stick with that and we'll go to next. You can change again the language or country if you need to, but these are what I want, so I'll leave them as the default. Remote access is sort of the whole point of Jellyfin, so you're going to want to go ahead and check allow remote connections to this Jellyfin server, and you're going to want to also enable automatic port mapping. The reason you're going to want to do this is going to be easier to find this on your network by leaving these on. So we'll go ahead and click next, and we are done. We'll click finish, and now we can log in. So I'll go ahead and sign into my server, and we have TV shows. So I can browse that folder, or I can even see the latest one, and I'll hit play. And there's my video playing. Now, this is my video, but you can put whatever content in here you want. So if you have a bunch of movies stored on your computer, you can throw them over onto your Jellyfin server, and you can play them. You can get apps for Android, iOS, Fire TV, Apple TV, all sorts of stuff so that you can play these on your smart TV, you can play them on your smartphone, and you can play them anywhere and store them in this one place, and it's really a, like your own private Netflix or Amazon Prime video. Thanks always for watching The Linux Guy. Please follow us on LBRY, subscribe on BitChute, and we will see you in the next one.